Greetings, everyone. My name is Sean Galloway. I'm the president of ProAct Safety and the host of Safety Culture Excellence. Recording this video in Stockholm, Sweden, where my sister is going to be getting married in a little less than an hour. I wanted to share an idea here with you today. When people are working, when they're performing tasks, they're using two major parts of their brain. And there's several parts of the brain, of course, but consider the ones we're going to talk about today are the conscious and the subconscious. They're using two different parts of the brain. Typically, if they're doing a task that they really need to think about, re requiring cognitive ability to really think about it, they're using their prefrontal lobe, the area of the brain that really requires you to think about it. But they're also doing things in the subconscious. Just like you can walk and talk on the phone. Just like when you come up to an intersection, what do you automatically do before you cross the street? You look both ways, right? People are always going to have other things on their mind. And what if they're stressed out about some of the things? Like like an upcoming wedding or issues at home that people are dealing with, people are always going to have other things going on in their brain. So what just happened a little bit ago for me today is I was going to go out and get run some quick errands at some local shops nearby. And as I'm crossing the many streets here, what I'm thinking about is my sister's wedding today. But what I did when I came up to the intersection is I automatically look both ways. That's something that happens at the subconscious, what we call a habit, right? Behavior that becomes a pattern that happens in the subconscious. And a lot of times we don't even realize the things we're doing subconsciously. Have you ever gotten anywhere and thought, did I stop at that stop sign? Or did I, did I turn and look both ways before I turned? You know, we do things without really even thinking. Just like if you if you're, uh, typically drive a certain way to work and it's on the weekend and you're going somewhere else and sometimes you'll find yourself going in that same area. Because you're doing something, you're driving in that area, driving in that direction, and you're doing it without thinking. You're operating on autopilot. Now, people can do that when they've done something several, several times. But if they start to think about other things, sometimes that can divert people's attention. That's why it's so important to make safety a habit. And that's a good idea in itself, making safety a habit. But the question I have is, which ones? When I drive in, when I fly into New Jersey, there's a, a refinery and a tank yard where they store a lot of their chemical. And on the side of it, it says, drive safely. Well, that's a good idea to prompt somebody to, to do something. But if we want to do something, what specifically do you want them to do? Just like making safety a habit. That's a really good theory. But in practice, which ones? What habits are you creating for yourself and are you creating for other people? Because to make something a habit, they have to be able to internalize it. And just like respectfully, rules and policies and procedures, most people can't memorize all of those things. That's kind of the big picture. And it's very important. Those things are some of the first things you should have in a program, in a safety program, a safety process. Those are the foundational elements. But beyond that, we'll often ask people, can you obey all the rules? Can you follow all the procedures? Can you wear all your personal protective equipment and still get injured? The answer is going to be yes, right? But what outside of that can we do to help people minimize their exposure to risk throughout life? Because when your people get injured at home, I've said this before on other videos and on our weekly podcast, when people get injured at home, if your employees go home, and, and I hope this doesn't ever happen, but if they go home and get injured tonight, they're going to be just as absent as if they got injured at work, right? So you want to create a safety habit with people, but which ones? If you were to create specific habits and safety for your employees, which ones would they be? Do you have an answer to that? If the employee comes up to you and says, hey, look, I only have time to do a couple things in safety that, that I can do outside of the rules, policies, and procedures, I only have a couple times, or, or I can only remember a couple things. Which ones do you want me to do? Do you have an answer for that? That's the key thought for this video. If you want to create habits within individuals and safety, which ones are they? Do you really know? I encourage you to look at your own even accident data, look at common practice, and identify which things, if we were to give people to internalize, really have the biggest impact. Because again, people are going to be doing things and they're going to be thinking about other things. That's just human nature. We can't focus all of our attention, even, even with safety, you can't consciously just focus it on that. You'll get tired, you'll get worn out, and you'll start thinking about other things. But just like as I was crossing the street and I had the wedding on my mind, something happened that was ingrained in me since I was a child of re repeated reminders about looking both ways. That's a very specific habit that I've created. So which specific habits have you created and which ones are you encouraging others to internalize as well? 
Thanks again for tuning in. Check out our other podcasts at safetycultureexcellence.com, or you can find more information about us at proactsafety.com. Have a fantastic week, and thanks for all that you're doing to help others in safety.